So we're here at the SID Display Week, and uh, hi, so who are you? Uh, I'm Elise Alkafaji. I'm the marketing manager for Novacentrics. Uh, today we're displaying our new Pulseforge Invent system. It's a highly configurable uh, photonic curing system for R&D and academic budgets. So, so this is a new product? Yes, um, this is our newest tool. Um, the base configuration starts at 59K. Um, as I mentioned before, it's highly configurable, so um, you can add additional lamp drivers to um, increase the power of the tool for different kinds of material processing. Is it like a rack down here? Yes. So what kind the, of things do you put in there? So, so each one of these are the lamp drivers. Uh, the base configuration comes with one lamp driver system. Um, and uh, how does it compare with the other products you have shown before? Sure, so it's actually very similar to the Pulseforge 1200 and 1300, um, but it starts out at, I would say, the Pulseforge 1200 level. Um, so if you're working with conductive silver-based inks on low temp substrates, then a base configuration would be well fitting for uh, meeting those needs. And Invent sounds like it could be suitable for uh, students or universities or something like that? Yeah, so we've been working with a lot of uh, students and going out to a lot of universities and um, working with them to get one of these systems in their labs. So how many did you get so far? How many, how <laughs> many there's like thousands more you should reach? Because <laughs> there's there, lots of labs, right? And sure. everybody needs to get involved with this. This is the future, right? This is the future of uh, print electronic applications. So um, I think we are close to nearing our first sale in Spain. Um, and then we're working on a couple in the US as well. But we've visited now, uh, I think, over 20 different schools. So we're working with several uh, colleges and universities. And the way that people do print electronics, is it basically your way or there's other ways too? So Are, there, do you cover most of the different ways people want to do this? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of different things you can do with the tool more than just uh, curing. There's also soldering. So uh, my coworker Vahid is actually going to introduce one of the uh, new techniques for using the tool, which we call photonic soldering. Soldering. We, usually people have a machine and they solder stuff. Is it what you're talking about? So this is a, a soldering process that happens in a matter of milliseconds. Um, we're use, using traditional soldering paste, um, but processing it on low temperature materials. All right. Thanks. So let, let's see. So hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Vahid Akhavan. I'm one of the applications engineers at Novacentrix. And as my colleague Elise has said, uh, we're here at the Hitachi booth at the SIT uh, Display Week conference and we're part of their portfolio of uh, processes that we provide for the microelectronics and the print electronics uh, world. So you partner with Hitachi? Yes, Hitachi is one of our partner organizations that we work with. Like helping you achieve more things, do more stuff? Right, exactly. We're trying to, trying to increase our bandwidth to get into different markets and provide um, capabilities that are currently lacking within the within the ecosystem that they have here at the conference. So uh, can you show how this machine is working? Right, so the machine works very similarly to our other machines in that we have a very high power flash lamps. Yeah. We have a set of capacitor banks that get charged up with, the, with, the, with our power supply and then they discharge it in a very digital format across the flash head and that this charging process enables us to uh, create a very high power flash of light in a very controlled fashion and we place our samples here on the sample tray and we'll be able to process it. There is, uh, our bread and butter still remains the printed electronics uh, processing of silver and conductive traces on plastics or paper but we're also getting into more advanced applications whereby we're able to do new things. Some things that come into play for the display, display kind of ecosystem involve, uh, we do some work on delamination, but the work that I would like to demonstrate today is uh, soldering. And the process of soldering is uh, very similar to what you er described earlier in that uh, we have the ability to um, 
Yeah. So we have the ability to uh, um, go ahead and use a little soldering iron to solder. But really that's not feasible when you want to do something of plastic. And that's not really not feasible when you want to do it in a very high throughput environment. So what we have here, we have a plastic sheet, right? So this is a PEN substrate. And we have actually printed, screen printed silver traces on top of this. So you can see the silver traces going across the path. And what we have here, we have uh, uh, stencil printed uh, solder paste. And that's similar to the solder wire you get. This is SAC 304, which is a very standard uh, lead-free solder that is used. And then we have pick and placed uh, LEDs onto this format. So as you can see, these small uh, bumps are LEDs. A whole bunch of LEDs, you just put them on. Right, there's a whole bunch of LEDs and you put them on. And that's the, actually the, the, the slow limiting factor on the processing rate. We put those on and then through one flash of light, we're able to heat up both the component and the solder and, and uh, reflow the solder so that it actually attaches the component to that circuit. But is it, to put all these little uh, uh, lights on there, you, you do it manually or? It's a pick and place machine. Uh, There's another machine. Yeah, so the pick and place machine takes, so these components come commercially available and the pick and place machine just takes one component and we tell it where it needs to sit. And once you program that machine, it can do maybe 60 components a minute. So one component a second, and then it can place it wherever we tell it to place. And then you put it in your machine to make it Right, and then fixed. we put it into our machine and we flash it and it actually heats up the component and the solder paste and reflows the solder paste, similar to that little iron that reflows the solder paste enabling us to actually attach the component to the circuit. Is this something you've been doing for a long time or is new? Or? Uh, this is a new application for us. Uh, the photonic soldering application, we started it late last year. Uh, we are still expanding upon it and the, our ability to do it. We think it fits very well with the, with the, um, with the display ecosystem because in the display ecosystem, People are starting to move away from LCDs and OLEDs into actually LED-based displays, where you have actually each pixel is a combination of uh, red, green, and blue uh, small LED package that needs to be soldered in a matrix together, and then that enables us to make a big display. So you're going to be part of the micro LED world. We are hoping to be part of micro LED world. We think that this kind of capability is uh, can be uh, miniaturized to enable us to process micro led displays all right and uh so uh, what else is next so let me light this up for you so you can see it actually in action So there's no mistakes in it, it's just, no it's just reliable. Yes, exactly. Right. So this enables us to really do a, quite a lot of work um, related to that. The other application that we, we, we are targeting at the show is called delamination, where we use our high power units to delaminate um, polyamide substrate from the carrier glass. This is currently done in the OLED manufacturing designs with lasers, where they take laser from behind the, once the OLED material is built, they take laser and they shine laser at the interface between the glass substrate, the, the polyamide substrate and the glass carrier. And that releases that layer from the carrier. And then you have a freestanding, uh, flexible um, display material. Uh, one of our aims with uh, the, the doing it with our tool is that there are a couple of drawbacks when you use laser. One of the big ones being speed. You have a very low speed because you have a very small illumination area that you have to raster in a very, very uh, continuous format to actually delaminate the display from a glass. And that creates a very expensive delamination process. The other issue is that you have a very low yield because if you, for example, have a defect in the in your polyamide material, the defect acts as a lens, 
it can actually burn out that part of your OLED material. And so you get a defect in your device and then you have to cut it out. The other issue is that when you're using laser, you get an ashing process where you have some decomposed polyamide remaining in behind your, um, your, uh, your release layer. With this process, what we do, we take the carrier glass and we deposit the absorber. We deposit a very thin metallic layer on top of that that enables us to um, take advantage of the absorbance of that metallic layer and heat up the interface between the poly deposit polyamide and the metallic layer. And then once we cure that, we can easily release that as well, release the polyamide layer from the, from the tungsten uh, absorber layer. That process has some advantages. One is that because of our high illumination area, we can process at much faster rates. We can process up to 100 meters per minute if necessary. The other advantage is that the light never actually shines on the polyamide substrate. So that what happens is that you don't get any ashing, you don't have an issue with defects, and so as a result of both those issues, your yield could be higher in the process. So there's a lot of people in the industry interested in, in, in those solutions you have? Uh, we have had uh, quite a lot of interest, yes. We are working with uh, several partners very closely to be able to bring those uh, applications to realization.